sales leaders go to the squeakiest wheel. Yep. And my top 20% performers are doing great. So just let them go. Yep. Right, you guys are struggling. I'll be coaching over here and developing over here. Meanwhile, top performers are not learning. You know, we're talking about failing salespeople turning over. The top performers are turning over too, though. And so the, the interesting thing I see is uh, sales leaders go to the squeakiest wheel. Yep. And my top 20% performers are doing great. So just let them go. Yep. Right, you guys are struggling. I'll be coaching over here and developing over here. Meanwhile, top performer is not learning. Top mm -hmm. performer isn't uh, seeing any career progression. They're just being asked to do their number again quarter on quarter. Yep. And eventually their steam runs out. That fire that we spoke about doing the same thing quarter in, quarter out, yep. um, burns out and they look for a new challenge. So we're noticing the top performers are turning over too. So it's turning over at both ends. Um, and so, you know, we, we did a survey not too long ago uh, of top sales performers and why they leave jobs. Right. And it, th there's two reasons. Um, the first one is simply that they didn't see where the next step was, didn't didn't understand what that next step is, and didn't feel like they were being invested in from a developmental point of view. Yep. I think when people are learning, they're interested and they're motivated. Correct. And and so that wasn't a surprise. And the second reason was change. Yep. Um, so when organisations change the goalposts or management shifts or there's a buyer, yep. you know they signed up for one thing, now it's different, I'm moving on. So that's harder to control. But certainly that first one, uh, do you see that going along, uh, on a lot with, with your clients, that the top performers sort of still moving on themselves? Well, they do. And look, you've got to step back and zoom out occasionally. I call it zooming out and, and yeah. looking at the, the broader environment. And yeah. the truth is that you know, the sort of business velocity that's going on now. Product life cycles are going like this. Um, sales cycles are getting longer because more and more buyers are risk averse and they don't yeah. want to make a decision. So we've got consensus buying. Um, CEB said 6.8 buyers per decision nowadays. So, you know, even your top performers are dealing with this, this you know, ex accelerated rate of change. Yeah. Um, industries spring up overnight and then they're gone tomorrow. So there is naturally going to be a fair amount of shifting and whatnot going on. Yeah. And it's part of the reason why I set up Sales Tribe, frankly, is that, you know, there's a lot of salespeople out there looking to do, um, you know, short-term contracts and short-term engagements and that kind of thing. Okay. So, yeah, there's, um, there's definitely a move towards that kind of turnover as a natural evolution of business. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, look, once again, um, Graham has authored The Future of the Sales Profession. Get your hands on this. Uh, Graham's got a lot of great ideas around how we can all survive and thrive in the new age of selling. Thanks again for your time today, Graham. It's been great speaking with you. Appreciate it, Look Steve. Look forward to speaking to you again soon. Thanks very much. Good on you.